this afternoon, we talked about Data Prepper as one of the tools you can use for microservice observability. Our next presenters are going to take us on a deep dive into Data Prepper and show us how it can be used to support observability in Jest. Please help me welcome from AWS, uh, David Venable and Rajiv Tari. Hi, I'm excited to be here at OpenSearchCon. My name is David Venable, and I'm a senior software engineer at Amazon Web Services. I'm also a maintainer on the Data Prepper project. Hey, folks, this is Rajiv Tauri. I'm a principal product manager on the OpenSearch team. Excited to be here. Super excited to be presenting with David Venable. He's one of our top notch engineers on it, so it feels like a privilege. Uh, I'm going to temporarily step off the stage while David does the bulk of the presentation and the demo. And I'll be back up right after to, uh, to wrap things up a little bit. So take it away, Dave. All right, today we're going to be talking about using Data Prepper for observability in Jest. And this is something I'm very excited about because at one of my previous companies, this was a serious problem that we had. We'd have incidents, and it'd be really hard to figure out what was happening. And so we, we want to talk some about uh, open search, uh, using open search for observability. There are a lot of teams using it. We're going to talk about why. We'll get into a little bit about why we recommend using pipelines. And in particular, we're going to talk about data prepper as a pipeline. I'm going to dive a little deeper into using Data Prepper to help you with the three major signals of observability, traces, logs, and metrics. I'll do a short demo. And then after that, I'll hand it to Rajiv. He's going to talk some about some customer stories and a little bit about how you can get started. Well, we know that modern software systems are really complicated beasts. And they're made by a lot of different teams, often in different geographies and time zones. And we want them to be highly reliable. And so a lot of teams are using open search to help them observe their software systems in uh, near real time. And there are a few reasons it's a popular tool. One, it is open source. Uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier at the conference. It, you can use it for free. Cost is a major aspect here. Also, being open source, you can contribute back to it. We also talked about how you can contribute back. And the community is really open and wanting to receive contributions. It's heavily customizable. You can use the powerful uh, piped processing language, which you can use to create custom dashboards using open search dashboards. And there's a fantastic observability plugin with great observability UIs. And we got to see some of that earlier today. And I'm going to kind of go back to some of that a little bit later as well. Now, our team strongly recommends that if you're using open search for observability, you have a pipeline in front of it. And there are a few reasons why we recommend this. One is to help with cost. So one cost of running open search is, of course, the storage cost. You have to store a lot of data. And with observability, there is just a lot of data. And we're talking about terabytes a day. You also have to worry about your compute and your memory cost. And the more data that's coming in, the more you're going to need for your compute and your memory. So now you're increasing the cost of your cluster. Well, we can use a data pipeline to help here. One, we can deduplicate data. We can also filter out data that we don't need. And another thing we can do is sample data. So especially with observability, a lot of the signals we get are really repetitive, and we see them over and over again. So let's just get a sampling of what's going on there instead of storing it all. We also have the option to route some of our data to lower cost storage options. A lot of people like to use object stores for this. One of the big reasons is they do have a lower cost per gigabyte. Pipelines also help with your data quality. So when you have an incident, you want your operators or your software engineers to be able to get actionable insights right away. What you really don't want them doing is finagling with the data that they have to try to see what's happening. And a pipeline helps here as well. We can transform the data into something that is immediately useful for us. And also, since a lot of the software we have comes from different teams, they may be producing data that doesn't always look the same. So now we can start to normalize the data, and we can have schemas and standards that help when we're observing our system. Now, we all care about our users' privacy. And again, a pipeline will really help you here. 
We can use a pipeline to redact data that is sensitive to our customers. Uh, we can remove it entirely so it's never stored in your open search domain. We also have the option to control routing. Some people have compliance requirements where some data can go in certain geographic regions, but not others. So we can move the data around to the, the region that it's allowed in. Also, we can start to do streaming data analytics rather than analytics on, the da on data once it's in open search. One common example of this is enrichment through GeoIP. So as we get requests coming in, we can look and see where our users are coming from, and we can enrich that right in the pipeline rather than do that later in open search. We're also looking into doing streaming inference processing, and we also do streaming data analytics on trace data, and I'm gonna talk some about that in just a little bit. So for these reasons and more, our team created Data Prepper. Data Prepper is an open source project it's Apache 2 licensed, and it is part of the open search umbrella. It's a last mile data collector, and we built it specifically for observability use cases. We do support the three major uh, signals in observability. We support traces, logs, and metric data. You can use Data Prepper to get the data quality that I was talking about just a few minutes ago. So you can filter data out, you can enrich your data and transform it so that it looks the way you need it to look. We also support stateful processing. So I, I hinted at this a little bit earlier. As data's flowing through Data Prepper, we can accumulate the data, hold onto it temporarily, and we can create aggregations of that data before sending out uh, a, a different view of that data. And we are committed to open standards. So for example, we integrate with the open telemetry standard. And I'm gonna talk some about that, but open telemetry, uh, it's come up today, but it is a CNCF project. It is open. And we also integrate with FluentBit, another CNCF project. All right, this diagram here shows the basic concept of data prepper. And so really what you have is you have one or more pipelines. And a pipeline always starts with a source. And ultimately, you want that source to get to some destination. And we call that a sync. Now, for the most part right now, your sync is going to be open search. And we have some interest in other syncs we'll talk about later. Now, in between, we offer a buffer. And this buffer will help hold data for the processing that we need to do. And it can also help when you have intermittent issues with your open search cluster. And then comes the set of processors. These are totally optional, but this is really where a lot of the power comes in. Using processors is how we enrich our data, filter it, and transform it. And you can create, you, you can create your own processors, but you can also use the ones we have to offer, and you can configure them for your specific needs. This is our reference architecture if you want to use Data Prepper for trace use cases. So I did mention that we viewed Data Prepper as a last mile collector. And so we would expect that you have Data Prepper sitting right in front of your open search cluster. And instead of sending your trace and span data directly to open search, we recommend you send it to Data Prepper. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to instrument your application. And you'll want to instrument it with some tooling that works with the open telemetry standard. And this is going to vary depending on your language. And uh, but you do need to instrument it. And you're going to run the open telemetry collector as a sidecar. So again, this is another open source product. And we would expect that you run one of these right next to your application, perhaps on your application host. Or if you're using containers, you can run it as a sidecar container. You'll configure it to receive data from your applications and send those to Data Prepper. For trace analytics, you're normally going to use a pretty standard pipeline. This pipeline is getting data from the open telemetry collector, and then we split the data into two sub pipelines. So if you're not too familiar with trace data, uh, probably the best way to think of it is think of a web request going through your system. You know it's probably going to go to multiple machines. And if you just think of each machine as being a span, and then the overall accumulation of all that being a trace, that's probably the simplest way to think of traces and spans. Now, each machine only knows about its own self, so it just knows its one span part. 
Now all those spans are gonna come into Data Prepper and you can even get more granular than just one machine. And, and I definitely recommend that you do because with instrumentation you can get a lot more detail. And so as those spans come in, they only know a little bit of context. They just know about what that span is covering. Well, this pipeline that I show on the top, this is our trace raw processor, and it can enrich all those spans with an accumulation of the data that came from all of the spans, the overall trace. And then below it, we have a service map processor. As we're getting all these spans and traces, we can now start to find out what systems are talking to each other or what applications communicate with each other. And this lets us build a service map that you can see in open search dashboards. This is a screenshot from the open search dashboards UI. Uh, our colleagues uh, presented on this a little bit earlier as well. You can see the, the services. We derive this from, uh, we derive this in data prepper from all the span data that's flowing through. And we can also get some really useful information here. So we can see, for example, the latency for these different systems. We can also see the error rate. And then this is also how we build our service map. So this is a zoomed in view of a sample service map. And in here, we can highlight different points of interest. So in this case, what we're doing is we're highlighting the error rate. And so you can see this red node, that's a Redis cluster. And it shows that it's getting an abnormally high error rate. So you probably should take a look at it. We can also do this by latency or throughput. Now, if you're not already using traces, I really recommend you do. Uh, on one of my previous projects, we, the developers and I kind of took some initiative of our own to add tracing into it. Uh, this was more of a, a side thing to help us out. <clears throat> and not long after that, we got some really slow requests coming through. And really, it was that span and trace data that helped us to find the node that was running slow. And then also by giving really granular instrumentation, we were able to go in and see, hey, actually we got this SQL query that keeps running over and over again. It's the same one for each request. And so we were able to improve our customer experience using that information. Now, if you want to use, use Data Prepper for logs, here's the application architecture we recommend. So you're going to see it's very similar to what I had with traces. Data Prepper sits right in front of your open search cluster. Now, instead of using the open telemetry collector here, we're using FluentBit. We checked in with some users of open search and we found that a lot of them are already using FluentBit. And so we thought, hey, well, let's, let's work with that. They, it's a really popular tool, it's also open source. Now your applications are almost certainly generating logs already. Problem is you gotta get them off and that is where FluentBit comes in. And so again, you run FluentBit as a sidecar or along with your host and have configure it to load your log files and send those to Data Prepper. All right, when a log line gets into Data Prepper, it's probably gonna look like this. Now, you probably can guess there's some useful information here, but what that is, you can't really know. And so the first thing in your log pipeline is almost certainly always going to be a grok processor, and that will allow you to configure uh, what that log line means, and you can get some useful data out of it. Now that you've got this useful data in fields, you can certainly send that straight to open search, and that's a huge improvement over just sending log lines. But not only that, you can start to use this for aggregations. And I'm gonna show a demo on that in a little bit about how you can aggregate off these fields. Data Prepper also supports loading objects from Amazon S3. And we support this for logs. And so to do this, if you have an S3 bucket, and a lot of users do, you can set up an SQS queue. And so as new objects get written there, you'll get notifications in this queue, and Data Prepper pulls off of that queue. And so for every object that gets written, we know, hey, let's load from that. And so when we do that, Data Prepper will then pull from the bucket and parse it. Right now, we support doing this for JSON arrays, and we also support new line delimited files. And we expect to have support for CSV in our upcoming version. Finally, I do want to touch on the metrics use case. And so again, you would use the open telemetry collector and you configure it to receive data from your application. And you're going to send that data off to Data Prepper. Now, some users do find that they can get that data and put it into open search. Uh, that's possibly a little bit of a niche case. And so one of the things we're looking to do in an upcoming version is support 
outputting your metrics to another uh, system like Prometheus. And there's also some, uh, we're, do we're doing some work as well, or other teams are doing work to support being able to federate queries. And so hopefully we can still go, going back to that idea of having a single pane of glass, even if that data is in Prometheus, we can hopefully view that in open search dashboards. And with that, I'm gonna move on to the demo. Okay, so here I'm got, I'm gonna start up a, a quick file real quick. So we've got, I'm going to run an application. So I'm going to start a few services here. We're gonna have data prepper running, open search, open search dashboards, and I'm gonna run FluentBit. Now, instead of running an application, I'm just gonna use a small uh, script to generate some fake logs. We're gonna wait just a second while that gets started. And we'll take a look at the logs from Data Prepper. So I'm going to generate our network data and show you what that looks like. So this is based off an example that a customer of ours had, and hopefully it is legible. I did try to increase the font size. But we, we had some users that were getting logs that were on disparate lines. And so even though it was really the same event, they were showing up on different lines. And so in this case, we can use the source IP address, the source port, and the destination IP address. And we can use that to correlate the data and then create an aggregate view of that. So I'm gonna generate this data and it should go to open search. Okay. Now we're gonna pull up open search dashboards. Okay, so we generated 60 log lines and we see that we have 60 events here in open search. Now the problem though is that this data is disparate and representing multiple different events. So for example, we can see that we're going to have uh, only a partial view of the data that's coming in here. And so we get some of the log lines. For example, we can see the TLS version and the encryption, uh, but we also, uh, and sorry, I'll just go back here real quick to show you kind of what this looks like. So each of these events is showing that we get some sort of TLS information, and then we also have our HTTP request, some information on the HTTP request, and the response code and the size coming back in bytes. Now this is all on different lines. And so what we can do, what we can do here is we can add this aggregate processor. I'm gonna show how that works in just a minute. So what this aggregate processor does is this tells us that we're going to look at three keys. We wanna look at the source IP, the destination IP, and the source port. And as those events come in, we're going to aggregate those objects and combine them into one object. And that's what this action called put all does. It just puts all those fields into one document. And so I'm going to stop, stop that demo, and I'll show you the one with the aggregate processor running next. Again, we're starting up the same services. The only difference now is that in addition to that initial grok, we're also, uh, we also added this aggregate processor. And so this is starting up. And I do wanna briefly show what our grok here looks like. And so here we can express what these log lines look like. And so you can see that we can configure that first there's a timestamp and then there's some network node information. And then down here we know that there's a source IP, source port. And so all of this is coming out of configuration rather than out of code. And now I will run the logs again. And so again, we see the same logs that we saw before and we have information spread out on different lines. And I'll just show that to you real quick. If we do a find on this, we can see that this particular source IP shows up three times and it has some TLS information. We're making a request for this widgets 3008 and we got a response code of 200. Now, if we look at open search dashboards, uh, I'm gonna refresh this. Instead of 60, we should see a far fewer number. We should see 10 hits, great. So now we see that we have 10 objects. Uh, and now 
when we look at the data in OpenSearch, we're going to see the destination IP, the destination port, the encryption that we had before. But now we also get the HTTP method. So now the get has been combined with it, the HTTP URI and uh, the protocol, the response size and the status code. And so basically, we've just combined all of the data that was coming in all these different log lines, and we've put them into one object. And this way, you have a better view of your data when it goes into OpenSearch. All right, that's the end of the demo. So now I'll hand it over to Rajiv. Awesome. Thanks, David. That's beautiful. Um, I always get nervous when you're holding a mic with one hand and typing with just uh, you know username password on the other hand, but you made it work. So that's phenomenal. Uh, thanks. So hopefully you guys got a great picture um, of what Data Prepper is capable of doing. Um, what I want to share with you is a couple of example customer stories uh, of people that are using Data Prepper. Both of these links are available as blog posts on opensearch.org, so you're free to uh, peruse them in more detail. The first one is from uh, Dow Jones. Uh, they built out a distributed uh, tracing pipeline with Data Prepper. Uh, using Jaeger instrumentation, and they wrote an excellent blog post in all the configurations that they had to do uh, with sampling, et cetera, built in to be able to support that. Um, that's a fantastic one. Uh, David talked about the metric processor, uh, how could we build a metric pipeline. Uh, that was a contribution, actually. We didn't develop it. That was a contribution from SAP. Uh, and they wrote a blog post as well, talking about how they did it and why they did it and what the capabilities are in terms of collecting data from open telemetry, collect, collecting metric data uh, from the open telemetry collector. So love both of these stories. Um, encourage all of you guys to check it out. Um, and I'm certainly hoping next year we can see some other stories from some of the great folks here in this conference and we can highlight them uh, for you next time. So what's coming up is, is Data Prepper 2.0. So we are currently on version 1.5. Uh, 1.5 added the latest capability to read from S3 buckets, read log data from S3 buckets, as uh, Dave just talked about. Uh, we're adding data proper 2.0. It has a number of key features. It's going to do multi-node aggregations. So the aggregate processor that uh, Dave talked about, where you can do a put all, you can do uh, other aggregation functions like you know, dropping sort of duplicate packets or summarizing the information from duplicate events, et cetera, as well. Uh, it's going to be extended to multi-node aggregations. So if you're running multiple data prepper instances uh, in your environment, if it's horizontally scaled out, uh, you can do multi, you can do the aggregations across of them. It's going to use the same peer forwarder logic that we use for trace data. Uh, so just as in trace, just like we combine multiple spans into an end-to-end -end trace, and we do multi-node uh, processing to be able to support that. We're going to use similar logic. There's been some enhancements made to a peer forwarder to be able to support that for trace data. So that's one piece in there. We've also added new capability for conditional routing. If you want to write your data into multiple open search indices, uh, you just need to configure one sync and just set up conditional routing to be able to send it different data sources to different, uh, different indices if you've configured uh, in your cluster. So that's super valuable. Uh, we've also added a JSON parser and a CSV parser. So uh, JSON parser will transform them um, into a, a document that can be indexed straight away into OpenSearch. Same thing with a CSV parser. Uh, it'll parse the CSV log files uh, content uh, and index it uh, super easily um, into, uh, into an open search index. No need to write like fancy grok processors, et cetera, to be able to handle that. The, the parser will sort of take care of that automatically for you. So uh, those are two additional capabilities that are coming up. We're super excited. This is literally weeks away at this point. Um, so we'd love for some of you to try it out. Uh, it's all open source, so it's being done, uh, it's being developed in the open. Um, we've got, uh, 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 you know, so the preview for 2.0 is available. Uh, and so if you want to sort of go in and get your hands dirty and try out some of these new capabilities or any of the functionality that uh, David talked about, uh, we'd love to sort of engage with you on that. Uh, all you have to do is send us an email. So our contact information, um, uh, both David and mine, has probably been shared with you um, as part of the speaker notes. So you can just email us uh, or 
uh, there's a, we have an open source project on GitHub. So you can just uh, ping us there, uh, open an issue or contact us directly out there to be able to get access to it. And we'd be happy to hook you up with a preview of Data Prepper 2.0 or any of the uh, GA releases that we have already have going on right now. So that's it for me. Uh, it was exciting to be able to share all the work we've been doing on Data Prepper. Um, thank you, David, for putting it all together and uh, making this happen. So I really appreciate that. And thank you for being such a wonderful audience and um, being engaged in our, in our demo and our talk here. Thanks. Thank you.